we shall talk about the first step in translation that is initiation so uh, to talk about initiation uh, it is important to understand about shine delgarno sequence shine delgarno sequence is actually a polypurine sequence because it mostly consists of purine residues that is maybe a or g Usually, this Schindel-Garno sequence is composed of AGG, AGG sequence. Uh, in most of the organisms, it's a consensus sequence. So, the importance of this sequence is, this sequence will allow the correct binding of the ribosomal subunit. You can see, this is the initiation codon. Means, this is the first codon from which the protein synthesis or uh, the process of translation of the mRNA would start. So, we understand that the ribosome should bind at this place on the mRNA. So, this should be the right positioning of the ribosome so that initiation codon um comes within the vicinity of your ribosome uh, subunit binding to the mrna okay so agg agg is a sequence which is a polypurine sequence which is found on your mrna at the 5 prime end of the mrna it is found so how the sequence will allow the right binding of ribosome is the smaller subunit of ribosome will have one RNA, rRNA which is known as 16S rRNA. In this 16S rRNA there will be a sequence which is complementary to this Schindel-Garno sequence that is UCC, UCC sequence is found on the ribosomal RNA. So, that's why uh, this ribosome will correctly bind at the at the 5 prime end of the mRNA but not elsewhere. So, this right binding of the ribosome onto the mRNA um, will allow correct protein synthesis. Then, we shall move on to how exactly the initiation will happen. So, initially in the introduction video, I have discussed that the three important components required for translation is mRNA, ribosomes and specific tRNA molecules. So, actually in addition to these three molecules, the initiation phase also requires certain initiation factors which we call as IF1, initiation factor 1. IF2 initiation factor 2 and IF3 initiation factor 3. So, these initiation factors along with mRNA, ribosomes and specific tRNA molecules are important for initiation of protein synthesis. So, let's first talk about the uh, functions of these initiation factors. IF1 it actually binds to the A site of the ribosomal unit and it will prevent the initiator tRNA from binding to the A site. I'll explain what exactly it is. Then IF2. IF2 will direct the tRNA to its correct position in the initiation complex. Then IF3. IF3 binds to 30S subunits and it prevents premature reassociation of the larger and smaller subunits and it also controls uh, the ability of 30S subunit uh, to bind uh, rightly with the mRNA. So, before we understand about the functions of these initiation factors, uh, let's have a look at the structure of ribosome. So, this is the basic structure of ribosomes and the regions are also shown for your convenience. The E site, exit site, P site that is a peptidyl tRNA binding site, A site that is amino acyl tRNA binding site. Hope you got an idea about the structure of ribosomes. Now, we shall 
look at the process of the initiation what exactly happens so this is mrna running from 5 prime uh, 5 prime end to 3 prime end so first of all the 30th subunit which was already bound to if3 and if1 30th subunit which is already bound to if3 and if1 will bind to this mrna you can see the 30th subunit which is bound to if3 and if1 so here you can see this is p site which means this is the a site right so this is the initiator codon initiation codon which comes into p site students remember only the initiator trna is going to enter via the p site only the initiator trna will enter via the p site all other trnas bringing all other amino acids will enter the ribosomes through a site now our initiator trna should enter into the p site which means this a site should be blocked it should not be free right so this a site is blocked by if1 initiation factor 1 binds at the a site and it blocks the a site so that our initiated trna can enter only through the p site okay this is the function of if1 then coming to if3 um, the smaller subunit may bind with the larger subunit before it binds with mrna which should not happen so if3 will prevent the premature association of smaller and larger subunits um, this if3 also functions in correct binding of the ribosome with that of the mrna so if3 if1 along with 30th subunit has bound to the mrna now you can you can also observe that the initiation codon that is aug has fallen into the p site of the ribosome now coming to uh, the if2 if2 is initiation factor 2 so this if2 will bind with the charged trna this is our initiator trna i am calling it as initiator trna because it will have anticodon uac which is complementary to initiation codon aug and this initiator codon uh, will bring methyl uh, it, it will bring sorry formyl methionine that is the initiator amino acid first amino acid formyl methionine as bought by initiator uh, trna which has got uac in its anticodon loop and this uac is complementary to aug which is our first initiation codon so this if2 will bind to initiator uh, trna and will allow the initiator trna uh, to exactly enter the p site it will help the initiator trna to come uh, and attach near the p site of the ribosome okay the next step is attachment of the 50s ribosome uh, before the attachment of 50s ribosome if1 if2 and if3 all these initiation factors are uh, like they are released uh, gdp is also released actually along with if2 gtp is also there so gtp will be cleaved to gdp so if1 if3 if2 initiation factors gdp is released and the 50s subunits now joins the smaller subunit this is a small subunit this is the big subunit larger subunit that is 50s subunit so this makes 70s initiation complex 30s 50s it will make the 70s initiation complex